Do not worry. That is what Jesus said. Don't worry. We're reading today from Luke chapter 12, verses 22 through to 34. So let's get right into this. Uh, Luke 12, 22 says, He said to his disciples, as Jesus speaking to his disciples now, again, let me just make this very clear. He's not speaking to the world here. He's not speaking to the multitudes. He's not speaking to the general public. He only said this to his disciples. Therefore, I tell you, don't be anxious for your life, what you will eat, nor yet for your body, what you will wear. Life is more than food, and the body is more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They don't sow. They don't reap. They, uh, they have no warehouse or barn, and God feeds them. How much more valuable, valuable are you than birds? Which of you, by being anxious, can add one cubit to his height? One cubit is about 18 inches. If, you then, if, you, if then you aren't able to do even the least things, why are you anxious about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They don't toil. In other words, they don't work hard. Neither do they spin. They don't even make things like that. They don't, they don't even make their own clothes or anything like that. Yet I tell you, even Solomon, this is the richest man they say that ever lived, Solomon, in all his glory, all the beauty that he had, was not arrayed like one of these. One of those little flowers was more beautiful than Solomon. One of those little flowers was arrayed in more glory than Solomon was. Okay. But if this is how God clothes the grass in the field, which today exists and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? Don't seek what you will eat or what you will drink, neither be anxious. For the nations of the world seek after all these things, but your Father knows that you need these things. But seek God's kingdom, and all these things will be added to you. Now again, what does that mean by seek God's kingdom? Seek to be in the place where God rules and reigns in your life, where God is king. Not your feelings, not your reputation, not your friends, not your boss, not the celebrities, not the culture, not society, not the government, but God. Seek, the, seek to be in that place. Seek to get to that place where God alone is king in your life and he rules. Well, how do, how do, how do I get to there? I, how, how do I get to the place where God rules in, in my life? Well, let me give you a little tip. A king doesn't rule without rules. You need to get into God's rules and start obeying them. You start obeying God's rules. The kingdom of God will start taking root into you. Seek God's kingdom and all these things will be added to you. You know, in another gospel, it says, it says seek, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. What does it mean by his righteousness? It doesn't mean that, uh, how a lot of people say today in, in the modern Christianity that you're clothed with some the, the invisible righteousness of Christ that nobody can see but God alone. No. His righteousness just means what God says is right. My righteousness is what is right according to my own opinions. Johnny, Johnny's righteousness is what Johnny thinks is right. Let's not go by what Johnny, what Tommy thinks is right, but let's go by what God says is right. Let's do what he says is right. Let's be right in his eyes. That's his righteousness. A lot of people have their own righteousness today and their righteousness is directly opposed to God's righteousness because they, what they say is right, God says is wrong. 
what they say is wrong, God says is right. So let's not go by a human's point of view of righteousness, but let's go by God's point of view of righteousness according to the ancient scriptures. Seek ye first God's kingdom and all these things will be added to you. Verse 32, don't be afraid, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell that which you have and give, give, give gifts to the needy. It's so important. Make for yourselves purses which don't grow old. What is, he, what is Jesus talking about? He's talking about treasure in heaven, Purse, purses, so to speak, the wallet of heaven. Make for yourselves purses that, which, which don't grow old, a treasure in the heavens that doesn't fail. Where no thief approaches, neither moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So, you know where a person's treasure is by where their heart is. You know, by, you know where their heart is by what they talk about a lot. You know, Jesus also said in another passage, he said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You know what a person's treasure is in life by listening to what they have to say every day. What do they talk about every day? That's where their treasure is. Let not your treasure be on earth, on, in earthly things, in worldly things, in secular things, but let your treasure be in heaven. Have an eternal perspective. And more than that, have God's righteousness, which means know what he says is right, know what he says is wrong, and go by that. Do what is right in God's sight. Fear him. And he will always be there and you will be blessed. As it says in the scriptures, God said, and you will call unto him and he will say, here am I. God will respond to your prayers very quickly. It says the, the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous man avails much. Well, you know, there's a righteous man is very hard to find these days, but I encourage you to be one. As you go, may God bless you and, and enlighten the eyes of your heart, give you great revelation, show you great and mighty things in the name of Yeshua. Amen.